Okay, hello mga students. Guess what? This is the last video lecture under chapter 1 of the book of Hermosilia Pew Salosag Call. We will be talking about the theoretical framework of auditing or what is the basis of auditing. Alam ni man, alam po ninyo ano? Well, auditing as ano, as a function, as a as a process ano, as as uh, as a discipline. Okay, meron po itong theoretical framework. So, talking about theoretical framework, no? Sa mga nagtitesis dyan, di ba? Meron tayong theoretical framework. <laughs> oh, naalala ko na naman tuloy yung hindi ko pa nagagawa. <laughs> okay, now, oh, going back class, no? The audit function operates within a theoretical framework because this sets, uh, this gives, uh, no, this guides us. Okay? Now, the following, what you will see below are the select postulates, assumptions, or ideas that support many auditing concepts and standards. Una, audit functions operate. Oh, parang may mali ako sa grammar. Ano? Audit functions dapat operate. No? <laughs> na OC si sir. Audit functions operate or audit function operates on the assumption that all financial data are verifiable. Pangalawa, the auditor should always maintain independence with respect to the FS under audit. Pangatlo, there should be no long-term conflict between the auditor and the client management. Pangapat, effective internal control system reduces the possibility of errors and fraud affecting the financial statements. Panglima, consistent application of GAAP or PFRS results in fair presentation of financial statements. Panganim, what was held true in the past will continue to hold true in the future in the absence of known conditions to the contrary. At pangpito at panghuli, an audit benefits the public. Of course, Hindi ko kayo iiwanan sa ere nang hindi ko to ipinapaliwanag. Kaya i-discuss po natin ito one by one. Okay? O, dito makikita na ninyo yung tatlo, ano? Pero dito muna tayo mag-focus. Sundan nyo muna ako, class. Pagbigyan nyo na ako, no? <laughs> dito muna tayo followed by the second and the third bullet. Now, audit function operates on the assumption that all financial data are verifiable. Anong ibig nito sabihin? Pasahin ko muna bago ko explain ha. All balances reported in the to prove their validity. If no evidence exists in relation to the FS on which the auditor is to express an opinion, then they're fit to perform. Ang ibig nito sabihin, kung may mga figures tayo sa financial statements, pag sina kunwari sinabi natin na yung cash ko, 10 million. Dapat meron tayong supporting documents na magpapatunay na nang existing yan. Na nandyan yung pera na yan. O ano ang support natin? The bank statements. ba? So dapat merong supporting documents or meron tayong maipapakita na ebidensya na totoo yan. Kasi kung wala maipapakita okay, na bank statements na meron tayong 10 million na nakapangalan sa kumpanya, eh hindi totoo yan. Okay, may invalidate yung assertion, yung representation ng management as to the existence of a 10 million cash. ba? So, dapat verifiable. How can you verify something that doesn't exist? Oh, so, gagawa ka dyan. If you are the management, gagawa yan ng kalukuhan. No? Para lang makapag-prove, makapag magpa-fabricate ng evidence na hindi naman talaga totoo. Okay, that is where fraud comes in. Pangalawa, the auditor should always maintain independence. Okay? Paano independence? The auditor's report will be of little or no value if the users, readers, are aware that the auditor is not independent with respect to the client. Parang yung objectivity din yan, ano? Uh, dapat wala kang pinapanigan. So, ibig sabihin, pag independent, or yung independence, you are a third party na walang financial interest, walang in self-interest doon sa audity, sa client na inu-audit mo. Kasi kung malaman-laman ng mga users na ikaw pala ay part ng board, board of directors, ikaw din yung nag-audit, paano nila masasabi na objective ka? E sasabihin nila, ay hindi, yung, re yung report niyan, bias sa company, kasi part ng board yan, board of director. 
So walang independence, no? So kinakailangan para magkaroon ng silbe, para may value yung audit report, dapat independent yung external auditor. Okay? Independent siya sa client. Okay? So that is where independence come in. Comes in. Okay? Pangatlo, there should be no long-term conflict between the auditor and the client management. It is acceptable, it is understandable that there will exist a short-term conflict. Kasi halimbawa, yung mga application ng mga auditing procedures, o minsan hindi naiintindihan niya ng client, papaklarify sa iyo. Tapos minsan yung mga proposed adjustments hindi nila maintindihan, ayaw nilang tanggapin. So there will be conflict ano, because of application ng auditing procedures or in terms of accounting principles. Let's say may mga bagong standards na taking into effect. No? Oh, but in the end, dapat editor and the management must be interested in the fair presentation of the financial statements. Kung wala namang pinagtatakpan yung management and yung objective nila is maging fair yung presentation ng financial statement, they should agree eventually. Dapat ma-resolve yung conflict. So dito papasok yung tinatawag natin na conflict resolution, di ba? Which is a skill that you have, that you need to have once you enter the office, okay, once you enter the corporate life. Not editor, no? But we can apply it in different scenario, in the business setting. Okay, the short-term conflicts are understandable, but in the long run, dapat walang long-term conflict. Okay? In the long run, walang long-term conflict. No? Redundant si sir. Next, next four. Una, effective internal control system reduces the possibility of errors and fraud affecting the financial statements. Oh, internal control. Balikan natin yung internal control. Pag may internal control at effective ito, in place yan sa, ano, sa organization, mas may ano tayo, no? assurance tayo. Mas may comfort tayo na tama yung mga proseso na ginagawa. Because may mga measures in place no? para maiwasan yung uh, occurrence ng mga errors at saka yung presence ng fraud. So, the more, the stronger the internal control, the more assurance it provides about the reliability of accounting data and financial statements. Kasi pag, mas ma pag mahina yung internal control, uh, duda ka na dyan. Paano natin masasabi na yung accounting data, yung information na ipinoprovide ng system ay tama? Okay? Kasi baka mamaya may mga lapses in the controls. May mga control weaknesses na tinatawag. Okay? Consistent application of GAAP or PFRS results in fair presentation of financial statements. Pag sinusunod natin yung established criteria, remember, naalala nyo pa ba sa pinakaunang video lecture natin when we defined the, the auditing, no? established criteria. So if we are following those established criteria, PFRS, GAAP or PFRS, tapos consistent yung application niyan, oh, yung result niyan is the financial statements are fairly presented. Okay? Or pang-anim na pala ito. Ano? Pangatlo dito sa slide na ito. What was held true in the past will continue to hold true in the future in the absence of known conditions to the contrary. Experience and knowledge accumulated from auditing a client in prior years can be used to determine the appropriate audit procedures that need to be performed. Okay. Kung ano yung ginawa natin, ano, based, based on our ano, no, experience, knowledge of the client, knowledge of the industry, knowledge of the audit procedures that we perform because ayan, yun din naman yung kliyente natin dati, hindi na siya bago. So, in the next audits to come, no, we can determine the appropriate audit procedures that we need to perform. Okay? Unless there are conditions no, na bago, nagkaroon ng mga changes, so that will affect that, well, definitely that will affect audit procedures. Pero kung wala naman changes, kung ano yung ginawa natin before, we can apply it, we can roll forward it. No? Because, basically, yung procedures na ginagawa natin before is will hold true ano in the in the subsequent or succeeding ano audits okay and of course the last item is that the audit benefits the public kasi ang pinaka intended users naman nito ay yung publiko okay so these are the basis of auditing our theoretical framework
let's take note of this seven theoretical framework of auditing and these are summarized no bigyan lang natin ng credit yung author because i picked it up directly from them no the auditing theory of Salusag Coltiu and Hermosilia. Okay, so maraming salamat. This ends our chapter 1. Okay, so I hope marami kayong natutunan sa chapter na ito. At if, remember, once again, if you have questions, please let me know and I'll be more than willing to accommodate you in your questions. Okay, or comment down below para doon ko kayo masagot. Until then, bye-bye.